yeah good evening to one and all indian society of radiographers and technologists as we wish you all world radiography day to all over the world and all of you know today 8th november 2021 we are here to inaugurate of online competitions quiz and oral presentation which is organized by isrt india i welcome you all for the event first of all i will welcome dr napapong pongana phang from he is from asia australia vice president of isrt i welcome you sir thank you the similarly i welcome a selva kumar is the president of isrt i welcome you sir thank you and mr suresh malyat general secretary isrt india i welcome you sir thank you i also welcome today's special guest professor paneer selvam sri ramchandra university chennai india i welcome you sir thank you i also welcome today's panel of judges the from the foremost dr sc bansal is a resident retired assistant professor from chandigarh i welcome you sir thank you thank you mohan bhagwat is a assistant professor jamia ahmad university from new delhi i welcome you sir and anto ramesh delvi a director of business development and uh, operations 2050 healthcare from bangalore india i welcome you sir now say thank you with this all of you very well know about it we are going to have a quiz competition as well as oral presentation in a different six different topics which is includes radiography modality and radiation protection intervention radiology computer tomography magnetic resonance imaging radiotherapy and nuclear medicine we have received the good number of participation registration for this event with this i welcome you all even for the participant whoever watching through the youtube channel of the isrt india as well as in the facebook with this i welcome you all and i request our general secretary suresh malyat to give a introductory speech thank you mr sashi dear dignitaries friends colleagues and listeners good evening and welcome first of all i wish everyone a wonderful world radiography day or international day of radiology ahead as all of you ever this is the 126th anniversary of the historical discovery of x rays by the legendary scientist william conrad johnson for the past 15 years isrt has been conducting world radiography day across indian peninsula with variety of programs but the last year the 125th anniversary or cosmic centenary anniversary of last year uh, x rays we couldn't conduct any physical mode of program and we have switched over to the virtual programs or virtual platforms and there was an overwhelming response for that program this year fortunately we had three physical mode of programs one was in the northern end state kashmir in srinagar and another one was in tripura agartala the capital city of tripura the northeastern state and third one was in cochin the headquarters state kerala and we had also celebrated the uh, physical mode of program in the headquarters office itself regarding this year the year 2021 is an important year for indian radiographers and as well as the entire allied healthcare professionals in india we have attained two major two major achievements in this year one one is the enactment of nchp act in indian parliament which made us a fantastic piece of legislation and second one is the international affiliation the two 
things were the long pending and long cherished dream for ISRT and we had played a crucial role in it. And for ISRT affiliation for Indian Society of Radiographers and Technologies, though it was pending for 2000, pending from 2018, we it made a reality, it come to a reality in this year itself. But our long association with international society has begun in 2011 itself. Mr. Nakopang, our honorable chief guest or guest of honor of this program, he, we, we were fortunate in, enough to receive him in our office in 2011 itself. And from that, since then, he is our mentor, patron, and every, everything for us. So I am indebted and grateful to this great man, Nakopang. I wish to spell a few words about him. He is a medical physicist as well as a medical radiological technologist in his parent country, Thailand. He is a visiting professor in five, five countries in the north, uh, in the Southeast Asia, and he is the Asia Vice, Asia Australia Asia Vice President of International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologies. And we are very fortunate enough to have him today virtually. And I am indebted and grateful to the CEO, Mr. Dr. Mr. Dimitris, and to our President, Donna Newman, ma'am. Also, I thankfully uh, remember the name, Madam Percy Peter. He's, a, he's an Indian origin radiographer from South Africa. And I am indebted and grateful to everyone for affiliating international Indian Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologists to ISRRT or International Society. Thank you all. I am giving my mic to our Mr. Shashi Shati. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for uh, the wonderful uh, introductory treat. Now, I request our today's uh, chief guest, Dr. Napapong, uh, to give a inauguration uh, inauguration of uh, our program and uh, addressing the gathering. Thank you and Namaste, India. This yes. is a great honor of myself to be here on this program. Well, it's, it's unfortunate that we cannot travel at the moment, but I hope we can travel soon. And I promise to go back to India. 10 years ago, as Suresh said, that I went to Kanyakumari and met with uh, people from your society. And uh, the relationship between myself as the representative from ISRT, the International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologies with ISRT has started 10 years ago. And, and it became reality when we had a council meeting uh, during the last World Congress in Dublin in Ireland to officially accept ISRT as our member. And I would like to congratulate to President Salva Kumar, the uh, ISRT president and also the executive committee of the society on the occasion that you become the full member of the international organization. We actually at the moment represent more than 80 countries and regions around the world uh, with more than 500,000 radiographers and technologists worldwide as our member. And we uh, very, very pleased to have a new member from India joining the, the, the big family of ISRT. And again, today is World Radiography Day. I would like to wish uh, well, happy World Radiography Day to everyone. This is to honor our pioneer, Professor Röntgen, who discovered uh, x-rays today in um, in 1895 and that's that's quite a long time and we have achieved a lot of things and of course for the education and training and also advanced practice for the profession that's the future i believe because when you can train the next generation they will become competent uh, professionals, uh, radiographers, and radiation therapists, and then they, at the end they will benefit to our patient and our our world population in terms of using uh, radiation in diagnostic and treatment of cancer. And today I 
I'm so honored uh, to be here to give the inaugurational speech of the online competition quiz and oral presentations. I wish for the success of the program. And um, again, happy World Radiography Day. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, your uh, valuable word. Uh, with this, I request to give a the session regarding on role of radiographers in a pandemic. Greetings from Bangkok, Thailand. It is my honor to be here today on behalf of the board management of the International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologists, ISRRT, to congratulate the Indian Society of Radiographers and Technologists on this uh, special event to celebrate World Radiography Day 2021. This is the inauguration of the online competitions, quits and oral presentations to your members in India. And of course, for this year theme of the role of the radiographer in a pandemic, I would like to present a good work from ISRT and our member societies in regards to the COVID pandemic from the past two years. Greeting from ISRT, the Board of Management. Ms. Donna Newman is the president at the moment, and I am Napapong Pongnapang, the vice president for Asia and Australasia region. ISRT is the voice of more than half a million radiography and radiation therapy professionals worldwide, with the mission statement to improve the standards of delivery and practice of medical imaging and radiation therapy throughout the world by acting as the international led for medical radiation technology and by promoting quality patient care, education, and research in the radiation medicine science. That's our mission. And we are very happy to have the new society member from India, two Indian societies joining us from the last council meeting online in Dublin World Congress. Congratulations again, and welcome to the ISRT uh, home and the members throughout the world join together as a big family. The ISRT we work closely with World Health Organization, International Atomic Energy Energy Agency and IAEA, European Federation of Radiological Societies, and International Commission for Radiological Protection, ICRP. ISRT was founded back in 1952. That was our foundation year. It's been a long time with the first president, Ms. Dina Van Dyke, and the first secretary, general secretary, Mr. Raymond Hutchinson. We honor these two pioneers as the founding member of our global professional society. Back in 1962, there were 15 countries involved with 21,900 members from around the world. And that was 15 countries back then. Now we have more than 80 countries with more than 500,000 members. The mission for SRT is quality patient care, education, and research. So the ISRT is the voice of the radiography professional worldwide with the key strategic priorities, including collaborate to develop and promote international standards, advocate for the profession, empower societies, and be the foundation for us to communication and governments. That's the foundation principle of our organization. 
if you look at radiology now and then we celebrate today as well radiography day because um, our founding prof uh, person professor will uh, dr william conrad Röntgen, he discovered x-ray on this date back in 1895 it's been a long time and radiography has been evolved and has been progressed over the years and what is well radiography the day day and the day that we celebrate today well radiography day is celebrated on 8th of november each year the date marks the anniversary of discovery of x radiation by william conrad Röntgen in 18, 18, uh, 1895 uh, William Wilhelm Röntgen is a professor of physics in Würzburg, Bavaria, in, in Germany, discovered X-rays back in 1895 accidentally while testing where the cathode rays could pass through glass because he did not know what ray were. He called them X, meaning unknown ray. And radiographer worldwide can use the day and the days around the day to promote radiography as a carrier as a vital contribution of modern healthcare and as an opportunity to increase public awareness of diagnostic imaging and radiation therapy. That's today. This is from the Society and College of Radio Office UK. We celebrate ISR to celebrate world radiography every year. And this were, these were the poster of what we have done uh, back in uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. We have different theme. And for this year's theme, this is very important, World Radiography Day for 2021. We highlight the role of the profession during the pandemic and we just host the ISRT webinar uh, live on Facebook, and we have Mr. Rajiv Krishnan from it representing India as one of our speakers. Congratulations on this. And the theme of this year is the role of the radiographer in a pandemic. The ISRT response to the COVID pandemic, we have done numbers of good things and we got support from our members, societies. The guideline that we have developed, and there are another uh, numbers of issues around COVID-19 pandemic for the profession, because at first we did, know, we did not know much about this COVID-19 and we have limited access to the practice standard of the profession, including infection control and patient care in special circumstances that uh, issues around pan pandemic of this COVID virus and many, many places around the world, we have limited access to the personal protective equipment, the PPE. And one important issue is that how can we prove, how can be, we be recognized as a frontliners profession in response to this pandemic? Well, of course, we as the official uh, have official relation with the uh, World Health Organization. We have uh, this support to set up the standard in collaboration with the, the WHO in response to um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So ISRT has been asked by the WHO to collaborate in producing a technical document specifically for imaging, medical imaging department. This will address control of, of infection safety practice, while also being mindful of safe of radiation protection practice we have to have two things in mind both infection control and radiation protection and we successfully published this isrt covid 19 guideline that has been adopted by numbers of member societies worldwide and we have a number of checklists so that you can um, download from this uh, website, from ISRT website, isrt.org. We have these information on our website there. And for international collaboration, networking is one of the key foundation uh, of the activity of the organization. We with numbers of, of, of the member society. And one best thing that happened to us is the Facebook Live. This creation of this program uh, draw attention from radiographers and technologists worldwide to join together. We have done during the, 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 the start of the pandemic, we have done like every other week with different topics. And we first started with topics around the uh, COVID pandemic and we got 
huge support from our member society from all around the world. We have uh, also address response to what members need. The members can be member society of IRSRT and members of the member society in each country. As we have more than 80 member society from all around the world, our member have different challenges. We do listen to them. And this of course has shown our involvement in, in numbers of webinar that we, we have hosted. And also things in common that we have found, including the standard practice in dealing with COVID-19. That was new to us. And problem in access to surgical masks, NS5 masks, and the uh, PPA. And one of the more important things, in my opinion, and, and a lot of people's opinion, is the recognition of profession as a frontliner. Because as long as we are recognized, we get good treatment from the, the government, we get good support from the government or from the Ministry of Health in terms of access to the standard care to our practice like surgical masks and 95 masks and PPE, things like that. And a lot of countries, especially like in my country, we have shortage of manpower because we do not have enough number of radiographers in the first place. And then when we have to deal with this uh, pandemic, with this airborne infection, a lot of hospitals cannot cope with this. And responses from ISRT, we published a number of publications, and this one from the left is the ISRT response document, appropriate and safe use of medical imaging and radiation therapy with infection control measures considered in addition to standard radiation protection procedure that was approved by the board since April 2020. And we also developed resources to member society to use in COVID-19 pandemic. You can um, download from our website. And for the recognition of profession in, in the frontline status, we host this webinar with the representative from around the world, from Europe, we got Philip Jusson from France, from Asia, we got Pichu Lunar, from the America, we got Reshma Mahipat from Trinidad and Tobago. And from Africa, we got uh, Rung, Rung Kasami from South Africa. And the practice, again, varies from one place to another. And this is evident that radiography profession is among the frontliners in this pandemic. International perspective provide good evidence-based feedback to the authority in many countries where the professionals still struggle to get proper recognition. We hand in hand, we join together, we collaborate to promote the status of our profession. And this episode has been clicked to watch more than 10,000 times with 78,000 plus people reach for the Facebook link. That was very successful episode. And around the world, like our colleague in Nigeria, Nigeria radiographers as frontline workers, we have uh, News and Views as our um, PR publication that we distribute now is online. Man, and numbers of uh, profession, professional um, society that our, our members submit the news so that we can distribute this news throughout the world. And this is the example of how our Nigerian radiographers colleague responds to the COVID pandemic as the frontline workers. Part initiative to support recognition of frontline workers during COVID-19 pandemic from the Philippines, Pichi Luna is also um, published a very interesting article on our journal, uh, on our news and view about how, th how did they do in the Philippines to get recognition. So lessons learned, COVID-19 has been a huge challenge, of course, not only to us radiographers, but to human. And COVID-19 is also a new kind of pandemic that medical professions have to learn how to deal with it quickly, but sometimes it was not quick enough. And radiographers and radiological technologists are one of the frontliners medical profession who provide imaging service to COVID-19 and the suspected COVID-19 infected patients. That's obvious. This is our role. And during the past two years, the profession has globally contributed not only to the professional services, but also academic 
and community service. We learn how to deal with the pandemic together, and we hope to overcome this huge challenge in, his, in human history together. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. And thanks again for inviting me to involve in this uh, webinar. And I do hope we can travel again soon and hope to visit you in India. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A, a good philosopher mentioned during pandemic time, a radiographer is someone who has given his or her life to create an image to, to betterment of the patient. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your uh, valuable word and dedication and effort to make a radiographer proud all over the world. Your talk uh, on theme of the role of radiographer in a pandemic has given a boost to radiology technology field. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. So with this, moving forward, now I request our uh, special guest, the Professor Paneer Selvam. He's a, a faculty from Sri Ramchandra University, Chennai, from India, to give an address to, to the students and to the gathered, whoever gathered here. All of you very well know about him. He's the uh, one of the pointer in uh, in the radiographer field in uh, in India, and he travelled all of the India in uh, each corner. He has given a more than a 500 talks in a different uh, CME and conference and uh, and the lecture sessions. I welcome you, sir, for the further your talk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sashi. Uh, Wish you all a very happy World Radiography Day to all the um, uh, faculties and the uh, delegates. Very good evening to the distinguished chief guest, uh, Dr. Napagong Pongnapong, the vice president of Asia Australia ISRRT. Uh, as I was mentioning, we met nearly 10 years before in Kanyakumari with the, along with Dr. Bansal. Uh, still, we remember that. Thank you, sir, for joining us. And I also would like to place my uh, uh, respect to the leaders, Mr. A. Selva Kumar, uh, President of ISRT, Mr. Suresh Malayath, General Secretary of ISRT, and Mr. Sashikumar Shetty, the Program Coordinator, uh, along with Mr. Magesh. Um, and other office bearers, delegates, and dear students. Once again, very good evening to all of you. Uh, and it is a really a, indeed a great pleasure and very happy to meet all of you on the occasion of the celebration of the uh, World Radiography Day 2021. First, I would like to uh, congratulate and thank, a uh, whole lot of thanks to all the radiographers and technologists who have not seen that time frame and work for the patient, as Mr. Sashi said, uh, for the benefit of the patient in 2020 and 2021 in this pandemic period. All of us has to salute them. Then I would like to congratulate uh, Mr. Sashi and team for organizing such a wonderful online competition for students. And my best wishes to all the dear students who are participating in this mega online competition event. Uh, this short of an online competition in pandemic situation, if you see, is something like an academic gift for the students and the budding technology. So don't miss it. It is something like, as I mentioned, it's an academic gift for you. So don't miss it because most of you are sitting at home. You are not gone to the colleges for quite some time. And this particular program, like this, so many programs are going throughout the country. All this program you consider as an academic gift, which is going to develop your skill and knowledge. See, please remember that future is going to be a competitive world. You know, always Anto and me used to discuss that the future is not an easy one. It is a competitive world. So all of us should have an intention as well as the interest to upgrade our skill and knowledge. That only can support us in future. It's a very important thing. We should never forget it. And all of us should also feel very happy 
as uh, mr suresh was mentioning that now I- isrt is been associated with the international organization isrrt it's a really a proud moment for all of us which are getting associated with the international organization okay uh, with these few words without wasting much time once again i would like to thank all the office bearers for giving and organizing this wonderful event and of course mr sashi is going to have a tough time of having a program for another um, what do you call something like a series of programs and of course for him it is not a new one he has done already uh, best wishes to mr sashi and team and uh, once again thank you sir dr napong pongna pong for uh, joining us um, uh, still we remember the kanyakumari along with ap berry sir and uh, mr ranjit singh i hope you remember that okay thank you very much thank you very much thank you so much sir as always your uh, motivational word will boost uh, every students faculty the staffs uh, in in uh, especially in the radiology fraternity uh, thank you once again uh, with this we'll move forward uh, now i request selva kumar a president of uh, isrt india to give a vote of thanks namaste all very good evening one and all it is my pleasure and indeed a happy moment uh, to be on this uh, inaugural session of that world radiography day celebration conducted by our association isrt with that uh, programs con- continue with that academic sessions competitions quiz programs by our society it is my pleasure that dr napopong vice president isrrt and regional director asia australasia is uh, considered and accepted our invitation to inaugurate our session of on the online competitions today as a part of the world radiography celebration 2021 thank you so much sir it's our pleasure that you are associate we are associating with your organization isrrt and for the past one decade we are in continuing touch with you and making our professionals here to the next level of international thank you very much sir in spite of your very busy schedule and today is a world radiography day throughout uh, world so many programs in the morning onwards we are watching that continuously one by one lot of programs from each and every section of the uh, people from different parts of the world conducting programs you are coordinating all the programs in spite of this busy schedule you accepted our invitation and kind enough to inaugurate our sessions uh, it's a first time we we are having uh, you directly in our program thank you very much sir for your kind words and yeah, definitely with your guidance we we'll definitely will go ahead with that international arnia thank you so much sir and uh, i congratulate mr shashi shetty and his team for making this uh, viable and wonderful program uh, compressing year after year they are making it a uh, program here uh, very fine tuned one and uh, appreciated by nook and corner of the indian origins in india and outside and thank you shashi shetty ji and team for making this efforts and make the very good program and uh, so many corners of the teaching institutions i am getting uh, appreciations regarding this program and on this special occasion my sincere gratitude and thanks to mr suresh malai ji our general secretary who untired efforts make our association into international hernia thank you suresh ji with your efforts uh, today our um, vice president isrrt is with us and make our program yeah his presence makes our program a very good one thank you thank you for that napopong ji and uh, suresh ji and 
is mr suresh malathi is the backbone of our association and make all these efforts to make take pain and make the instrumental in keeping ahead and mr professor panniselvam sir is a very much with us he is that association or he is the backbone of that all the programs all the pioneering vision to make this scientific programs here great level thank you sir with your vision definitely will go ahead and make the our academic fees here next level and our sincere thanks and gratitude to all to all the national council members gc members office bearers and of all the chase chapter and all the judges of this program and commander daniel sir joseph sir and others who behind the scene and in front of the scene making this program a very good one thank you all and <clears throat> at last my sincere thanks to all radiographers who worked during the pandemic period keeping the spread keep helping hands to the millions of professional without your support the medical field the making that covid patient treatment is not a possible one with your support all the programs gone very well india ahead of this all these covid programs thank you all thank you one and all who support the programs and last and not least isrt xn warm welcome and sincere thanks to all the participants of this events and guided by our eminent uh, professionals in the field thank you all and the thank you the judges without your active participation no program will successful thank you all for your support thank you thank you so much jai hind thank you so much sir for your valuable heart uh, before we leave uh, our today's chief guest uh, i just like to mention we have uh, uh, above 700 participant in quiz and above 4, 140 participant in oral presentation who is registered for uh, uh, the program is organized by isrt thank you so much sir for your valuable time and uh, we'll see you some other day with uh, as you mentioned in physically appearance when it's possible in india uh, we will for move forward for uh, student presentation henceforth uh, first first of all i i congratulate the participant who selected for the best four in the topic of radiography modality and radiation protection as i mentioned we have uh, four best presenter today out of uh, the n number of uh, uh, registration we have a first presenter aisha anwar she is from student from ucb m sh basic and life science college dehradun uttarakhand she is going to present in the topic of production of x rays and similarly the next presenter is josfita monterio she is a student from anapoya dimitri university from karnataka she is going to talk about radiation safety in dental radiography and next presenter we have saina soni she is from school of medical education gandhinagar kottayam from kerala she is going to talk about computer radiography and the on the last presenter we have a tansia peris she is a student from ksd medical academy nitty dim to university from karnataka she is going to talk about radiation protection in radiology i request uh um mayesh sir who is the behind of all this a technical part to to give a preference to the video in further and please judges please note after all four presentation is followed by question and answer session our anto sir is the first judge of the today and as well as after the anto sir questions is followed by our uh, honorable uh, dr sc bansal sir and followed by mohan bhagwat sir o to my sir of uh, presenter who is going to talk uh, in the topic of radiography modalities and uh, radiation protection we have a first presenter aisha anwar she is a student from basic and uh, life science college from uttarakhand she is going to talk in the topic of 
production of x-rays hello everyone my name is Asha Anwar I am a student of BNRIT third year studying in Uttaranchal PG College of Biomedical Sciences and Hospital Veradhi today I am going to present a topic called x-ray production through my presentation let's start the topic so these are the basic outlines which we are going to study through this presentation let's start with the first one that is introduction Firstly, we should understand the basic construction of the extra tube. The extra tube is made up of pyrex glass that encloses a vacuum and contains two electrodes. The electrodes are designed so that electrons produced at the cathode can be accelerated by a high potential difference towards the anode. Electrons are produced by the heated tungsten filament and accelerated across the tube to hit the tungsten target where the X-rays are produced. Basically, the X-rays are produced by the energy conversion. When the fast moving stream of electrons are suddenly de accelerated in the target anode of the X ray tube. Let us review the atomic structure. We all know that in 1897, J.D. Thompson discovered a negatively charged particle which is much smaller than any atom, which came to be called as electron. Based on the work of Rutherford and Bohr, a simple model of atom may be visualized as a massive positively charged nucleus surrounded by the electrons in orbit of specified diameters. The nucleus of an atom is made up of several types of elementary particles termed as nucleons. Of the nucleons, only protons and neutrons will be considered in the discussion because they are only those ones spotted outside the field of nuclear physics. The electrons are negatively charged revolving around the nucleus. Because an atom is always electrically neutral in its normal state, it must contain an equal number of protons and electrons. The simplest way to describe an atom is to visualize a central positive nucleus with electrons in circle circular orbit about the nucleus. The atomic system allows two electrons in the first orbit, up to 8 in the second, up to 18 in the third, up to 32 in the fourth, and up to 50 in the fifth. The electron orbits are designated by the letters K, L, M, and O, and so on. Now, the requirements for the X-ray production. The first one is cathode. The electron source acts as a cathode. Electrons can be produced either by ionization in gas or by thermionic emission. Next is anode. Anode is act as a target to stop the electrons. The high voltage is applied between the cathode and the anode. This voltage accelerates the electrons to a higher velocity. The vacuum. High vacuum is maintained between the anode and cathode because of the following two reasons. The first one is to avoid collision between the electrons and gas molecules. And the second one is to avoid oxidation of tungsten filament in the cathode. The glass envelope and housing are required because it absorbs the X-rays emerging in a desired direction. It maintains the required vacuum, it acts as an electrical insulator, and it also contains the cooling system. Now, the process for the X-ray generation. X-rays are produced by energy conversion when fast moving electrons from the filament of the X-ray tube interact with a tungsten anode target. This can be understood as follows. When the high voltage is applied between the cathode and anode, the cathode is heated and emits the electron. These electrons travel towards the target. These fast moving electrons possess kinetic energy. This kinetic energy is converted into heat and X-rays on interaction. This conversion taken place on a target material. X-rays can be produced by two different processes. One involves the interaction of electron with the nucleus of tungsten atom and the second involves the collision between the high speed electrons and the electron shell of the target tungsten atom. Let us understand them one by one. Let's start with the first one that is Bremsstrahlung radiation. It is a German word which means protein radiation or slow radiation. It is a process of relay collision between the electron and the nucleus and the target. The electrons between the cathode and anode have a potential energy that is equal to the product of the electrostatic charge. As the electrons accelerate, this potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. It occurs when the high speed electrons interact with the nuclear field. Negative electrons and the positive nucleus have a mutual interaction. The energy of the nuclear field is so great that the incident electron slows down. This diverts the incident electron path and causes a loss of energy and it is emitted as the X-ray photon. As a result, velocity changes, the electron may lose their kinetic energy in the form of Bremsstrahlung X-rays. The amount of Bremsstrahlung X-rays production is determined by the distance between the bombarding electrons and the nucleus. Suppose the electron is at a very large distance, hence the coulombic force is weak, low energy X-ray is created and this is higher probability to occur. Second one, the electrons at a very close distance, their coulombic force is strong, higher energy X-ray is created, lower probability to occur. 
नेक्स्ट वन इज करेक्टरिस्टिक एक्सट्रा प्रोटेक्शन इन दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन विद कैनेटिक एनर्जी में इंट्रैक्ट विद द अटेम्प्ट ऑफ द टारगेट बाय एक्जेक्टिंग एन ऑर्बिटल इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम द केशन नाउ दे इज अ वैकेंस इन द केशन एंड द अटम इज सेट टू बी आयनाइज द आउटर ऑर्बिटल इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम एल शिल और एम शिल विल फोल्ड डाउन टू फिल द वैकेंसी एट द केशन ड्यूरिंग द ट्रांसमिशन द डिफरेंस इन बाइंडिंग एनर्जी ऑफ द टू शिल इज रेडिएटेड एज अ फोटोन विच इज कॉल्ड द करेक्टरिस्टिक रेडिएशन दिस विल हैव ओनली डिस्क्रीट एनर्जीज If the transition involves an electron falling from L shell to K shell of a tungsten target, then the photon emitted will have energy E is equal to A K minus E L, whereas E K and E L are the binding energies of the K and L shells of the tungsten atom respectively. The energy transitions are designated by the shell capturing the electrons with the substrate of alpha or beta. The substrate alpha refers to adjacent shell transition, that is L to K transition. The substrate beta refers to non-adjacent shell transition, that is M to K transition. The only K characteristic X-rays are important in radiology because other characteristic X-rays are entirely attenuated by the tube window and filters. Has the glow voltage applied must be greater than the 69.5 kilo electron volt for tungsten target, 20 kilo electron volt for molybdenum, and 23.2 kilo electron volt for rhodium target respectively, which is called threshold energy. As the energy of the incident electron increases above the threshold energy, the percentage of characteristic X-rays also increases. Now the factors affecting the quality and intensity of X-ray photon. First one is applied voltage. Energy of photon emitted from the X-ray tube depends on the energy of the electron that bombards the target. As the applied voltage increases, the effective photon energy is also increases. Next tube current. The number of X-ray produced depends on the number of electrons that describe the target of the X-ray tube. The number of electrons depend directly on the tube current used. Next, the intensity will increase with the increase in atomic number of the target material. Exposure time determines the length of the X-ray production. In beam filtration, the filtered beam consists of high energy photons, which is said to be hardened. Last but not the least, X-ray beam intensity decreases. We have a next presenter, Josephita Monterio. She is an Ohio deemed to be university student. She is going to present in the topic of radiation safety in uh, dental radiography. Hello everyone, myself Josephita Mantiru, MSc MIT student of Annapoya to be University. Here before you to present my own presentation on the topic radiation safety in dentistry. The reason for the topic selection is nowadays demand for dental x-ray is quickly increasing worldwide. Radiograph is the most important diagnostic tool in dentistry which helps in diagnosis and treatment of dental problems. So coming to what is dental x-rays. Dental x-rays help dentists to visualize disease of teeth and surrounding tissue. According to World Health Organizers, around 60 to 90 percent of school children and nearly 100 percent of adults have dental problems. X-rays in dentistry are the common source of radiation exposure. So coming to the uses of dental x-ray. Dental x-ray images help dentists to diagnose, plan and monitor both treatments and lesion development. Usually x-rays are taken during dental treatment, dental surgery, dental implants, orthodontics and for many more purposes. These are the dental x-ray equipments used for taking dental images. So we can see uh, the first image showing the intraoral dental equipment, cephalometric dental equipment, panoramic x-ray equipment and cone beam CT dental equipment. And these are different techniques that use radiation to produce dental images. These are the dental images, intraoral x-ray image, panoramic x-ray image, cephalometric x-ray image and cone beam CT dental image. Each of these dental images are used for a different purpose. Each technique uses a different amount of. This is the radiation exposure chart, which shows amount of radiation exposure received under each technique or different X-ray sources. The amount of radiation received in intraoral, cephalometric, and panoramic X-rays are less compared to CBCT scan. 
coming to the types of radiation protective equipment used in dental department like lead apron lead shield and this lead shield is having a lead glass window so that the operator can watch the patient through this window and the thyroid shield and gonad shield these are the radiation protective equipment used and uh, this will protect from the radiation surrounding area of dental x-ray equipment must be protected from radiation to avoid exposure to persons away from the radiation source so that the primary beam never be directed at anyone other than patient patient should be positioned such that the x-ray beam aimed at the wall of the room and not through the doors or other opening where people may be located so for this purpose dental x-ray room shielding must be done this is the image of uh, guidelines provided by atomic energy regulatory board for dental room shielding primary barriers should be incorporated in any part of the floor ceiling or wall of the room at which the beam is fired secondary barrier in the wall provide protection against scattered or leakage radiation wall doors windows of the room should be provide protection against radiation outside the dental x-ray room warning light and placards should be kept to give awareness to the people now coming to the protection for patient like prior to the radiation exposure like we have to see for the proper prescription and proper equipment uh, should be selected and during exposure thyroid shield lead apron proper exposure factors film holding device fast film rectangular collimator like this uh, if we are uh, following this techniques we can reduce the radiation dose and after exposure like proper film handling film processing and proper interpretation should be done these all uh, the techniques uh, if you are using it will protect the patient from unnecessary radiation protecting the operator like the operator is not permitted to hold patient during exposure and if the operator is holding the patient during exposure then he has to wear the lead gloves and operator should stand behind a protective barrier and keep a distance from the x-ray source of 6 feet that is the operator should stand a distance of 6 feet from the x-ray source and hand held dental radiographic machine should have the back scatter shield and the operator should have a personal monitoring device which will record the amount of radiation received techniques used to reduce patient exposure like select appropriate technique adjustment of parameters use rectangular collimators use protective barriers giving or continue education to the patient outside room caution sign should be present coming to the conclusion like radiograph is the most important diagnostic tool in dentistry this proper protection is provided while exposing the patient we have a next presenter this saina soni she is a student you. from a school of Next presenter, Miss Saina Soni. She is a student from uh, School of Medical Education, Gandhi Nagar, from Kerala. She is going to present a topic in computed radiography. Hi everyone. 
in this presentation we will be focusing on computer radiography i am saina soni second year bmrt student school of medical education gandhinagar kerala computer radiography was the first modernized system to replace screen film radiography so as an introduction computer radiography is a process of capturing data from conventional x-ray machine and processing the data digitally to produce crisp and high quality radiographic images Computer radiography technology is based on certain halide-based phosphors having energy storage and excitation characteristics known as photostimulable luminescence or PSL. The PSL enables the phosphor to store X-ray energy temporarily and release that energy upon excitation by a laser beam. So, now let's discuss about the difference between screen film imaging and computer radiography. Both screen film imaging and computer radiography use an X-ray sensitive image receptor. In screen film radiography, we can see films inside the cassette. And in computer radiography, we can see PSP screens inside the cassette. Both were encased in a protective cassette. And both can be used interchangeably with any X-ray imaging system. That means we don't have to exchange or refurbish our X-ray rooms. We can use the same equipment. The only difference is how the images are extracted. And both carry a latent image that must be made visible by processing. Now, difference in processing. In screen film radiography, the image is manifested through chemical processing. Here we are using developers and fixers for chemical processing. Or here the image is manifested through manual processing. Now, in computer radiography, we were using computer softwares to convert the latent image into analog signals. Components used in computer radiography. Computer radiography is the generic term applied to an imaging system comprised of photostimulable storage phosphor screens or PSP screens. PSP screen is what actually going to acquire the X-ray projection from the patient and CR reader. CR reader is what extracts the image from this PSP by taking the analog signal and converting it into a digital signal. Readers can replace the dark room and processor. Digital electronics. To convert the analog signal to digital form, analog to digital converter, digital electronics are used. Workstations for manipulation of images, laser printer to make hard copies of images. Now let's discuss a little bit about PSP screens. The photostimulable phosphor PSP screen is positioned within the cassette. The commonly used phosphor material is barium fluorohalide and it has several layers. These are the layers of PSP screen. The outermost layer is the protective layer. This is a very thin, tough, clear plastic that protects the phosphor layer. The phosphor layer or active layer, a photostimulable phosphor, europium activated barium fluorohalide crystals that traps the electrons during exposure is present in this layer. The latent image is formed in this layer and it contains light absorbing dye to prevent light spread. The reflective layer. This is a layer sends light in the forward direction when released in the cassette reader. Conductive layer. This is a light absorbing layer made up of conductive needle like crystals that absorbs any unreflected light as well as any electrostatic charges. Support base layer. Polyester base layer gives structural rigidity to the PSP screens. Light shielding layer. This is a carbon particle layer that prevents the light from leaking from the rear of the imaging plate. Backing layer. This is to absorb backscatter. This is the soft polymer that protects the back of the cassette and the barcode reader is placed here. Doping of PSP. PSP plate is coated with europium activated barium fluorohalide crystals in the phosphor layer. Doping of europium creates defects in the barium fluorohalide crystals that allows electrons to be trapped more efficiently. Now let's discuss about the action of X-ray exposure in PSP.
We can see PSP screen coated with European activated barium fluorohalide crystals here. When the PSP screen is exposed to X-ray photon, the X-ray excites the europium atoms causing ionization to europium atom. The divalent europium is converted to trivalent europium. The electrons are raised to higher energy state in the conduction band where they are free to move until it is trapped in the F center. It is a metastable state. And the number of trapped electrons per unit area is proportional to intensity of X-rays incident at that location. These electrons constitute the latent image in computer radiography. Now let's go for the processing of latent image in computer radiography. The CR cassette with the latent image is placed in the reader and the PSP is extracted and raster scanned with intense red laser beam. The laser beam stimulates the electrons trapped in the F center and these electrons leave the high energy conduction band to lower energy balance band. And these electrons are reabsorbed by the europium atoms. This involves the liberation of high energy and this is done by the emission of blue-violet light. These light signals are detected by photomultiplier tool that amplifies and sends it to digitizer. The analog to digital converter digitizes the signal. It is assigning numerical value of each photo. The final process is erasing. Not all electrons have came back to the initial phase after reading. System automatically erases the plate by flooding it with light to remove any electrons still trapped after initial plate reading. Exposure to a bright fluorescent light removes the remaining information in 10 to 15 seconds. The imaging plate is reinserted into the cassette for reuse. Any remnants of the previous image results in an artifact known as image ghosting. Here we can see remnants of a pelvis image in a chest X-ray film. Here are some other artifacts caused by damage in the imaging plate. This is a graphical representation of steps in image acquisition and processing in computer radiography. Here are some advantages and disadvantages of computer radiography. PAX system is possible in computer radiography. Yeah, we have the last presenter, Ms. Tansia Perez. She is from uh, KSEGDAI Medical Academy, Nitted MTB University. She is going to present the topic of radiation protection in uh, radiology. Hello everyone. I'm Tansia Perez, MSc MIT from KSEGDAI Medical Academy. The topic for my presentation is radiation protection. Now as we begin, let us take a look at some pictures. Here we see hydrocephalus and induced burns, infertility, carcinogenic effect, spina bifida, cataract, and that is microcephaly. Now, why have I shown all these pictures? That's because these are some of the effects of radiation on human biological tissue. Now that we have discussed so many effects that radiation can cause to us, let us move on to the main topic that is radiation protection. How we can protect ourselves from all these radiation effects. What is radiation protection? It is basically the steps taken by the radiation worker to protect the patient, the radiation worker himself and the general public from unnecessary exposure to ionizing radiation. So the main aim is to minimize the radiation exposure at the same time maintain the quality of the radiographic images. The three principles of radiation protection are justification, optimization and dose limit. Justification states that that radiation must not be used unless it is recommended that is the benefits are higher than the risks. Optimization means that the magnitude of the doses, the number of people exposed and all that should be optimum. It should be as low as reasonably achievable. And the dose limit. It should be set to ensure that no individual faces unacceptable risk of high dosage. And based on these three principles of radiation protection, there was an acronym by NCRP called ALARA as low as reasonably achievable but then there is some glitch right as low as in the dosage if they are really low what about the quality of the image 
so hence it was later changed to alarp that is as low as reasonably practicable which means that the radiation dosage should be low it should be reduced as far as reasonably practicable at the same time a good quality of image has to be maintained the three cardinal principles of alarp are time distance and shielding under time we must know that the dose to the individual is directly proportional to the duration of radiation exposure so the longer time the patient is uh, under radiation exposure uh, more will be the effect second principle is distance so as the distance between the source and the person increases the radiation exposure will decrease and this is based on a inverse square law which states that the intensity of radiation is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source so if the distance is doubled the intensity of radiation will be divided by 4 and the third principle is shielding so a shield is a material that attenuates radiation that does not allow radiation to pass through it or cuts down the radiation that passes through it we have x ray tube shielding room shielding personal shielding and patient shielding the room shielding is further divided into primary protective barriers and secondary protective barriers in primary protective barrier is the one that is facing the primary beam or the useful beam of x rays so it could be either the wall or a ceiling that is faced by the primary x ray beam the secondary protective shielding is the ones that save us from the secondary radiations what are secondary radiations it could be the leakage from the x ray tube or the scattered radiation from the patient so examples of secondary barriers are the walls adjacent to the primary barrier or the lead barriers that we use and the patient shielding and this is done by using radiation protection devices such as lead aprons lead goggles thyroid shields lead gloves and gonadal shields let us study lead aprons first lead apron must have uh, lead equivalence of 0.2 mm thickness of lead or uh, 0.5 mm is used in fluoroscopy or interventional procedures where there are uh, long long duration of exposures and there are also 1 mm lead equivalent aprons available but they are barely used because of their heavy weight which could cause spinal injuries etc now a solution to the problem of heavy weight of lead aprons is that the availability of uh, lead free aprons these are made using tungsten or antimony or bismuth aluminum tin titanium etc of gloves these are made of lead and it has about 0.25 of m lead equivalents and these should be worn whenever hands must be placed near fluoroscopic field 
Thirdly, we have neck and thyroid shield. These are used in general fluoroscopy or x-ray special procedures. Okay, and they should have minimum of 0.5 mm lead equivalent. Protective eyeglasses protects the eye lens of occupational workers or uh, technicians from scatter radiation. So these have minimum of 0.35 lead equivalents and up to 0.5 mm lead, lead equivalents as well. Next is gonadal shields. These protect the reproductive organs from exposure to radiation in males and females. And these have of about 0.5 mm lead equivalents. And these are of different types like flat contact shields, shadow shields, shaped contact shields, or clear lead shields. So here is a chart showing the dose limit recommended by the ICRP okay, for an occupational worker as well as a public that is a patient okay for the different parts of the body you for your patient listening i hope you have followed what i tried to explain through the course of my presentation Uh, thank you all the participants. Now I request uh, all the judges to go ahead with the question and answers. <clears throat> um, thank you, Shashi. And uh, is Aisha? Aisha, are you here? I request all other the participants, please keep a camera on. Aisha, are you here? Uh, if Aisha is not there, uh, can we move with the next one or I should I have to wait? Uh, Sir, go ahead. Move ahead. Uh, Joshvita? Joshvita is also not there. Joshvita is there. Joshvita, please switch on your video. Joshita, can you hear us? Sir, you can ask a question to the next person, then you can come back. Okay, fine. And uh, Saini Sona. Saini Soni. Saina Soni. Okay. I, I think these three people are uh, not. Am I audible, uh, Shashi? Or yes, sir. Yes. I, I'll move on to Tanshia. Tanshia? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, thank you, Tanshia. I think uh, you have spoken about radiation protection and uh, yes. good attempt. Uh, only uh, two things I want to know. Uh, what about the. Uh, uh, you are talking, uh, spoken about protective devices. And uh, what about the measuring devices used in radiation protection? Yes, sir. There are measuring devices. Uh, basically, the mostly used uh, is the TLD batch that we use in day to day. What is TLD? Thermolucent dosimeter. Okay. Anyway, good. And uh, only one question to you is see, in your slide, you have mentioned uh, two MSV uh, dose for pregnancy. So, the latest update, it has been uh, two years, it is one MSV. I think if you know, it's not a problem because you are going, because in an MSc student, you are going to train your other team members and wish you all the best. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, over to you, sir. Okay. Tanisha, you have presented a good talk on this, uh, what you call, radiation protection radiology. Thank you, sir. What are the room size for this general radiography, for fluoroscopy, for CT? Can you explain? What's the recommendation for the room size? Uh, so uh, it depends like uh, two meter by uh, two meters uh, and basically in radiation protection we focus on the thickness of the walls sir uh, because of uh, if, if either the, the, the walls are lead line or the brick size thickness should be if it is brick then it is around 23 centimeters and if it is concrete it is around 15. Yeah, I'm not asking the thickness of the barriers I'm asking about the room size. Uh, so two meters Minimal by two room meters. size no? 
इट इज फिफ्टी फीट हंड्रेड फीट टू ट्वेंटी फीट बस रिकमेंडेड साइज इट्स गुड टॉपिक जो कवर सो मच थिंग्स और ये लेफ्ट दिस नो यस या दैट्स इट डोंट गेट पैनिक सर इज गोइंग टू टीच यू ऑल्सो या 10 मीटर्स बाय 10 मीटर्स सर फॉर फ्लोरोस्कोपी रेडियोग्राफी सीटी स्कैन सर एक्सरे रूम लेआउट व्हाट इज फ्लोरोस्कोपी So, yeah, actually, so you, can you? You're not telling exactly. You just guess work, no? You're not sure, no? So ten meters, I am sure about X-ray layout. But the meaning, meaning of ten meter, no? Sorry, sir. Ten meter, how much feet? 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 Please, Mr. Bhagat. Sir, you have to unmute, sir. I am not audible, sir. Mohan, sir, you have to unmute your. Uh... Mohan, sir, you have to unmute, sir. Unmute, please. Uh, unmute from there only. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we are able to hear you, sir. Ha. Ah, Tansi, up. Yes. First, sir. I would like to appreciate your braveness. That's. in front of the senior teachers you came and presented your paper it's not easy job ha huh. the topic was that you have chosen this safety one one of the most important chapter we are teaching in the classes though much part goes to the medical physicist but one should learn the basic principle of safety you have uh, you was advocating the use of lead apron goneral shield feral shield or the for whom for the radio or for or for the patient so in most cases if it is interventional procedures and all as long as as far as possible the radiation worker has to use it because sir uh, in uh, because occupational worker is the one who is in that radiation exposure for a longer duration compared yeah, to the patient right the, but what about the patient so, so uh, in the pelvic area and Suppose cervical spine X-ray is like that, then yeah. So for a patient, it is just once in a while. So when we can use, if it is not affecting the area of interest, then we can use these uh, radiation uh, protecting devices. But if not, so some this uh, dose is uh, it, at least in X-rays, it is quite less. So and her messages uh, tell us that uh, a little amount of radiation is good also. So, so it is not very. And we also you said the distance between the X-ray tube and all. So that also is quite. Uh, yeah, I'm not asking that. The distance is the God so gift. More the distance, ready. more the safety. So, I'm asking this the use of radiation protection devices which you are locating for uh, different types of you have aspirin. So when we are going. to read alara yes sir principles so the word optimization yes sir ha huh? so what is the yes, optimization sir. you must opt all right of technique or method those are available to keep the dose minimum yes sir okay yes, so sir. That, for that con- context i was asking mm-hmm. whether you will give the lead apron or lead thyroid shield or oral shield to the patient or not when you are taking suppose lower abdominal x ray or doing for the pregnant so not always uh, because uh, x ray exposure sir dosage is very low so this is mostly used yes, for the okay. you are very much right nowadays you know our old books says that we must use this one this is, but yeah. no but the no. new general says that these these things are not needed for the patient because patient coming for their own benefit yes sir so have to This is the dose. Yes, sir. Only by giving one lead or one, we this, you say we go for the yeah. last seventy year or eighty years. There is no accidental. Only thing that international radiology the exposure dose is quite high and patient are returning. Yes, sir. That's really the possible. Valuable shares. Yeah. Yes, okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tansia. Tansia, what we are uh, all three wanted uh, telling you is because being an MSc student. uh that's what otherwise nothing uh, to do yes, now i would like to add that sir bansal asked the question which you say yes. that to me that walls are should be thick and the 
distance is the god gift more the distance so if room is larger you are not going to think make more no, 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 wall or no, no, shielded no, no, no. wall understand yeah. <coughs> less shielding less is required parameters for the so inversely, for the you say already said <coughs> radiation is inversely proportional to the scale of the distance so yes. naturally less shielding will be required mm. yes anyhow it's a good presentation but keep Thank it you. up be confident yes sir thank you tansia thank you sir uh, josvita ah uh, yes sir am i audible uh, yes sir hi josvita i think you had presented on uh, uh, yeah, iop uh, dental x ray um, yes sir see what type of collimatrix is used because you are talking about collimatrix for dental yeah like uh, previously it was using like a uh, cone cone shaped uh, but now we are like uh, for reducing the radiation dose like uh, we, uh, it is better to use rectangular collimators no i think uh, now also the cone only yeah, is cone. being used i think uh, cone, you have shown yeah. of images of cone also so i think yeah. that's there and uh, during this pandemic how we are handling this iopa express actually iopa you said no what it what it is uh, expansion of iopa uh intraoral uh, uh intraoral uh, pantomography periapical uh, periapical radiograph yeah uh, no uh, because no dental radiography is not easy and it should be very hygienic uh, that's the reason we are asking during this pandemic uh, the dentist even they were asking covid test and other things so uh, at this see whenever you are presenting no try to yes. look at the current scenario and also add to the lines <coughs> so that will make us little more that you are updated on to the uh, current uh, situation uh, that's okay. it from my side yeah. sir over yeah. to you sir okay yeah. just with this talk is on the dental yes. uh, that is radiation safety in dental radiography yes sir so it's a very vital issue no dental radiography we generally neglect it radiation safety in the dental yeah because like previous time on all like uh, the patients were like uh, less uh, who are going for dental x rays now like uh, uh, the patients who are going for dent taking dental x rays has been increased because uh, uh, we can see now like uh, nowadays like dental uh, um, hospitals have been increased uh, like uh, uh, many of the people will go for the dental x rays for so, dental problems so yeah. what's the, my question is when we use the dental x-ray machine yes. can you tell the exposure parameters what are the exposure parameter kilovolt and ma which are used in the dental machine uh, yeah like um, uh, 60 to 70 kvp is used and uh, 8 to 12 ma is used MA. have you seen how it is done have yes. you ever seen yes 60, sir 70 kvp never used for dental radiography 7 60 around 60 to 70 no 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 not at all You are mistaken. Mm. Tell me which unit has got this sixty seventy kb in the dental machine? Like uh, intraoral, I have. Uh, uh, intraoral, we are talking about the intraoral radiography. Yeah. It is forty to fifty kb, not sixty seventy kb. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So we say kb is very less in dental, not but more than mammography, less than general radiography. Yeah. It in the range of forty to fifty kb, not fifty sixty kb. Okay. okay. Yes, remember. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Pass on to Mr. Bhagwat, please. Ha, hmm. just with a. Yes, sir. Very good evening. Good evening, sir. So, how are you feeling after this presentation? <laughs> yeah, this is my first presentation I have done. <laughs> so how are you feeling? Yeah. No, you have presented very well. Okay. Uh, sir. I would like to ask that most of the extra machines. Provided yes, with the handheld exposure switch with yes, a coilish wire. What? Yeah. Why this design is given? Why the importance of this? Uh, like, uh, yeah, it is uh, to make the operator to stand away from the uh, X-ray source. Like, uh, he can stand away from the X-ray source. And uh, nowadays, like remote control, uh, this thing has also been come. Like switches, remote control has been also been there. which helps the uh, like operator can uh, stand away from the x ray source and what is the purpose of local rule in the dental department we are making some local rules there 
yeah like uh, operator like operator should not uh, hold the uh, film uh, like he should not stand near the patients and also he has to stand uh, while exposing he has to stand uh, behind the lead shield or uh, he should be away like 6 feet he should be away from the x ray source and the uh, then the x ray beam should be not uh, focused uh, towards the wall Uh, sorry, towards the door or, or any opening, other openings, like uh, to reduce the exposure towards the other environmental people. Good, good, good. Thank you, Joshvita, and uh, good job and good try, and uh, keep doing well. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Shashi, uh, the other two members are not there. I think Aisha and uh, Sino. Sino, Sony, so, and Aisha. Is... Uh, can we move on to the next uh, session? I think interventional. I think is there, no? Yes, sir. If uh, we will uh, see that at the end of the the next topic, if they join, we will continue with that. Okay. Uh, we have a next topic in uh, interventional radiology we have a participant from uh, the different part of uh, india four top top four of them is selected for the final round the pranay panda is a student from centurion university of technology and management from odisha he is going to present uh, preparation contraindication risk and medications in the interventional radiology the second presenter is s manjula she is a student from srm institute for medical science chennai tamil nadu she is going to present material used in cath lab the third presenter is ashwati p so student from ksgd medical academy uh, nitted dimtu university from karnataka she is going to talk about four vessels angio and the last presenter of the day is karthik s SRM Institute for Medical Science Chennai Tamil Nadu is going to talk about radiation safety aspects in uh, interventional radiology uh, mr shashi there were a lot of disruption in the previous uh, presentations no yeah uh, slightly the technical issue sir i think this time okay. it will be all right <clears throat> yeah pranay i think uh, you can start your session i think right. uh, going into the second topic of the day uh, interventional radiology the first presenter is pranay panda he is a centurion university of technology student from odisha he is going to present preparation and contraindication risk in uh, interventional radiology pranay panda my topic is preparation contraindication risk and medication in ipr first we discuss about interventional radiology it is a sub specialty which provides minimally invasive technique with the help of imaging modality to diagnose or treat a condition minimally invasive means it is a small incision or insertion of an instrument into our body cavity then lo here local anesthesia is given that is anesthesia is given in particular part then it is used in diagnostic and treatment purposes Uh, it shows early recovery time then uh, eight of the 10 procedure uh, use small incision that is less than 5 mm nine of the 10 procedures use only local anesthesia with sedation and then eight of the 10 patients go home in this same day then preparation collect history and clinical examination report inform consent is taken it is the image of in, in consent form and patients should be well hydrated fasting is 4 hours prior to the procedure to avoid nausea vomiting then save and clean the atrial puncture site jalanin sensitivity test is done and ebr creatinine level is must check before the procedure then preparation mm, preparation part then the following test should be done that is pt pct pt ct then hbsg and hib then esr pulse chart then any history of drug intake history of diabetes mellitus then history of coronary heart diseases
10 normal value of the following test pt is 10 to 13 seconds pt is 30 to 45 seconds then pt is 2 to 7 minutes pt is 8 to 15 minutes then urea 7 to 20 mg per dl creatine 0 0.74 to 1.35 mg per dl platelet count is 150 to 450 paper micro return then contraindications are clotting disorder renal failure cardiac arrest cardiac failure cardiac failure then hepatic failure hepatic failure that is related to the liver then abnormal renal function then skin infection or swelling at the site of entry other contraindications are prothrombin time above the 30 percent of the control thrombogenic tendency thrombus formation formation of blood growth inside the blood vessel cardiovascular diseases history of allergy skin rashes or asthma pregnancy disparium from previous study then risk include bleeding and clotting then infection skin injury aneurysm aneurysm means bulging of artery then stroke heart attack and then anaphylaxis, dizziness, and loss of consciousness. Other risks include low blood pressure, that is the hypotension, lower heart rate, that is the bradycardia, higher heart rate, that is the tachycardia, fluid in the lungs, that is the pulmonary congestion, <coughs> hematoma. Hematoma is the collection of blood outside the blood vessels. Then pulse aneurysm atriovenous fistula that is the formation of fistula between arteries and veins then medication mm, common medication includes for IBR is analgesic that is drug to relieve pain then antibiotics that is slow down of the growth of bacteria then anticoagulants that is inhibiting the coagulation of the blood then antimetics that is the effective against vomiting and nausea and then anti-inflammatory that is reduces inflammation on swelling then anti-platelet agent prevent forming it prevent forming a clot then sedatives it makes the patient to sleep then thrombolytic agents thrombolytic agents are the drug that is able to dissolve a clot then vaso vasoconstriction it is uh, that is used in narrowing of blood vessels by small muscles in their walls and vasodilators that is the widening of the blood vessel leading to increased blood flow thank you here we have a second presenter s manjula she is uh, from srm institute for medical science chennai tamil nadu she is going to talk about material used in cath lab a warm wishes to all i s manjula studying bsc mit third year from SRM Institute for Medical Science, Vadapani campus. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee to give this opportunity to talk on the topic materials used in cath lab. Let's see what are the contents to be covered in the entire topic. International procedures, material used in cath lab, classification of catheters, embolic agents, strain craft. Let me explain this in detail. International radiology, this is our institution cath lab, the Philips Allura FD Biplane 20. Let me start with a small intro. Interventional radiology is a minimally invasive image guided procedures to diagnose and to treat diseases in nearly every organ system of the body. Interventional procedure is done in two methods. One is neuro intervention and non neuro interventions. Neuro interventional, let's see what are the procedures involved in it. Cerebral angiogram, aneurysm coiling, cerebrovascular AVM embolization, intracranial straining, carotid straining, and balloon assisted angioplasty. Neuro interventions, bronchial and pulmonary, esophageal straining and bronchial artery straining is done. Geo-unary, renal artery straining and uterine artery straining is done. Gastrointestinal, GI bleed embolization and biliary straining is done. Skeletal and extremity, vertebral plasty and peripheral angioplasty straining is done. Next, we move on to materials used in cath lab. Introducer said guide via catheters. See study specified materials, embolic agents, balloon catheter, stent, stent craft. Let me see detail. Introduces set. It consists of a needle, vascular sheet, 
of various size guide by your introducer. The main purpose of the introducer set is to straighten the curve tip of the guide wire. Backflow sheet is are used to gain access to the vessels and facilitate the insertion of catheters or other accessories for diagnostic and therapeutic. This guide wire, a spring-shaped metal wire, in the inner core is made up of a stainless steel and teflon coating as the outer core. The use of guide wire is the successful catheterization and guide and an accurate guidance to which to reach the target catheters. Long, it is a long hollow thin tube made up of a teflon polyethylene polyurethane type of materials with one or several holes at this distal end. Each catheter has a specific length, diameter, tip configuration, wide admittance capacity to which it performs. It, it, it serves as a pipeline through which the catheter and other materials are introduced. Sending a technique. Before starting this technique, as a sending a needle, uh, the, uh, the groin region should be clean and sterilized. Insert the uh, inject local anesthesia, locate the uh, 3 cm inguinal ligament, insert the uh, selenica needle, jet flow of blood will come out. After that, insert the guide wire through the needle, remove the selenica needle, insert catheter sheet with the dilator, remove the dilator sheet. Now the catheter is now prepared to receive the catheter. Classification of catheters is classified into diagnostic angiographic catheters, macro catheters, drainage catheters, balloon catheters, and transcentral venous catheters. Let's see this in detail. Diagnostic catheter. It is a single hole at the end and the end hole with side holes. These are these examples of the diagnostic catheters. Straight catheters, pigtail catheters, cobra catheters, side window catheter. Microcatheter. The catheter is less than 1 mm diameter. This is called microcatheter. It is of 3 planes or smaller. Designed for distal catheter decision. Drainage catheter. A pigtail catheter is used for draining a clear non viscous and coagulable collections of fluids. Balloon catheter. It is very short, soft or pliable as occlusion balloon to clear thrombosis or can be rigid, used for dilation. Next, we move on to embolic agent. Embolic agents are artificial agent introduced through the catheter produces blockage. Embolization, it is a technique of blocking unwanted group of pa group or part of blood vessels. These are the types of embolic agent. It can be classified into three: solid embolic agent, a liquid embolic agent, the mechanical embolic agent. Solid embolic agent, PVA particles, a polyvinyl alcohol, it's a permanent embolic material. Can be available in varying sizes 150 to 1000 mu. Can be easily injected through the microcatheter. It can be used in artery venous malformation, tumors, bleedings. Gel foam an absorbable spongy material right from gelatin. A surgical packing agents provide contact hemostasis. It is a temporary agent. These are the liquid embolic agents. One is an NBCA. Another one is onyx, NBCA, butyl cyanoacrylate, and acrylic glue, commonly used for AVM procedure. Onyx, a newer liquid embolic agent, produces permanent vascular blockages. The main advantages are aggregated over a period of several times. Mechanical embolic agent. It is uh, detachable balloons made up of a silicone or latex. They have only one phase that admit a small catheter. But when the catheter is removed, it can automatically seal. Next is coils made up of a steel, platinum, permanent tungsten alloy for permanent vascular blockage. It can available in many sizes based upon the size of the aneurysms. Turn on to next topic, stent. Stents are metal mesh tube device placed in a vessel to enlarge the lumen to provide a scaffolding. To hold the vessels open to increase the blood flow or in areas blocked by plaques and stenosis. Stain scrub. Stain scrub is stained with craft material which functions a vascular conduit. It is made up of a nitinone and stainless steel. The commonly used graft material or dacron. The uses of stain scrub. It can be used in conditions like aortic aneurysms, rupture aneurysm. It's to train, retain the persistent flow through the vessels. It is to prevent the enlargement of the, enlargement of the aneurysm wall. 
coming to the end let me conclude by conclude by con saying interventional radiology is one of the specialized forms of a minimally invasive technique in certain pathologies to achieve the best and optimal results which plays a vital role in both diagnostic and therapeutics a sincere thanks to all my faculties and staffs a special thanks to Ms. mrs r agila mit coordinator mrs n surendran radiation safety officer Ashwati P. She is a student from uh, K. S. Gadda Medical Academy, Nitta Dim Tibu University. She is going to present on the topic of four vessel angiogram. Ashwati P. Student of K. S. Gadda Medical Academy. I am studying first year chemistry MIT. So, what is a cerebral angiography? Cerebral angiography or four vessel angiography is the study of four arteries. That is four vessel study. carrying blood to the brain by the injection of a contrast media into it so going to anatomy the arch of aorta give rise to the brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery the brachiocephalic artery further branched into right common carotid artery and right subclavian artery so the circular fillus right and left internal carotid artery divides into two main branches that is anterior cerebral artery and medial cerebral artery so next we are going for the indications the main indications are aneurysm avm atherosclerosis stenosis stroke hemorrhage brain tumors and av fistulas then for contraindications are bleeding tendency to the patients on anticoagulant therapy history of contrast allergy impaired renal status pregnancy and skin infection to the patient so the equipment required for this procedures are cm unit ecg monitoring arterial puncture needle that is of 18 and 21 gauge guide wires sheath and dilators syringe local anesthesia normal and heparinized saline surgical pads and gauze pieces and catheters the main use the catheters are head hunter catheter simmons and benson hanafi wilson catheters then contrast media non ionic contrast agents are safer and less allergic so we are using non ionic contrast agent for diagnostic angiogram we are using obnipack of 300 mg iodine per ml and for neuro interventional procedure we are using obnipack 240 mg iodine per ml then dsa that is digital subtraction angiography the digital subtraction angiography is a nothing but which provide better visualization of contrast field vessels and pre contrast image digitally subtracted from post contrast image and it shows contrast field vessels and provide background compression then patient preparation the careful history and clinical examination informed consent should be taken patient should be well hydrated and npo for 4 hour so the puncture sites sites should be shaved and clean and xylokin sensitivity test should be done then approach there are four main approaches first one is femoral artery approach brachial artery approach axillary artery approach and carotid artery approach for uh, most common choose in site is femoral artery approach and second one is brachial artery then going to the procedure the patient lies supine on the angiographic table and safety straps fastened on the patient head to make it immobilized then electrode placed on the patient chest to monitor the electrical activity of the heart then pulse oximeter is clipped on the patient finger for measuring the o2 level 
then the area is prepared for the puncture in sterile condition and under local anesthesia small incision is made at the puncture site and the, the artery is punctured using seldinger's technique so what is a seldinger's technique the arterial pulse is identified and the puncture site is chosen surgically prepared drape and local anesthetic is given then the seldinger's needle is inserted into the vessel that is double puncture then stillet is removed and flow of blood through the needle is observed to form observe to confirm the puncture okay this one then the sheath wire that is a temporary guide wire is now inserted into the needle then the needle is removed the sheath is advanced along with the dilator over the sheath wire so Next is filling. For carotid arteries, we are taking AP axial, lateral, and AP oblique. And for vertebral arteries, we are uh, taking AP axial and uh, lateral projection. Next for complication, the complication include puncture site bleeding, allergic reaction to contact, pseudo aneurysm, air embolism, and hematoma. Then after case are complete bed rest is given, compression of punches set for minute of 20, then monitoring of vitals and maintenance of fluid and electrolytic balance. So these all are my reference. Thank you. Yeah, we have a last presenter of the day, Karthik S. He is a student from SRM Institute for Medical Science, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. He is going to talk about radiation safety expects in uh, interventional radiology good morning to all i am karthik s studying bacmat third year in srm institute for medical science adapalli campus chennai first of all i would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this the opportunity to talk on this topic radiation safety aspects in interventional radiology let me start with an introduction. Radiation exposure limit were introduced by the International Commission on Radiological Protection ICRP in 1928. The ICRP report form the basis for many national and international radiation protection programs in India. The Atomic Energy Regulated Regulatory Board established in 1983 is the competent authority which control over use of radiations in medicine and Radiations and its types. There are two types of radiations. The one is non-ionizing radiation and another one is ionizing source of radiation, natural radiation and man-made radiation. Natural radiations are radon and thorn, cosmic rays, terrestrial rains, internal exposure, man-made radiations, medical exposures, consumer product, occupational basic principles of radiation notification. No practice involving radiation exposures shall be adopted unless it produces a net positive optimization. Every effort shall be taken to the reduce the dose as low as reasonably achievable, considering the clinical, social and effective dose limits. The effective doses to the individuals shall not exceed the limits recommended by the commission. Recommend dose limits. These are the dose limits recommended for this different type of parts. Need for patient protection. Patient is irradiated by the direct beam. Medical pers personnel is irradiated by the scatter radiation. Patients may go may undergo repeated radiation procedures. A patient may receive in one procedure a dose equivalent to that dose the sta staff may receive in one or several. Radiation safety was responsibility. The government, the re regulatory body, the hospital management. The medical shops are the responsibility for radiation. Radiation safety is split, split into built-in safety, operation safety. In a built-in safety under it adequate ceiling, room layout, and the safety of equipment will be considered. And in operational safety, radiation safety training QA qualified staff and the safe work practice and those arguments are safety in work practice. Tedious principle ensure safety using the time, distance, and shielding parameters. Less time, more distance, time. The total dose received by a radiation worker in directly proportion to the total time spent in handling the radiation. Last framehold technique 
in this technique the last image is digitally frozen on the monitor after uh, exposure is terminated last image old is a dose saving feature since it allow physician to contemplate the last image and plan the next move without additional radiation exposure in a feature pulsed fluoroscopy the x-ray beam is emitted as a series short pulses rather than continuously at radius frame rates pulsed fluoroscopy can provide substantially dose saving it is shown that average dose saving of 22% is 30% is 49% at 15 10 and 7.5 frames per second respectively shielding when maximum distance and minimum time do not ensure an ex 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 acceptably low radiation level either radiation source or person should be adequately sealed with suitable materials the material that attenuate the radiation expansion is called a shielding and the shield will reduce exposure to the patient, staff, and the public. These are the protective aprons. The first one did not lead the apron. Second one is tie rod shield. Third one is goggles. Fourth one is gloves. And fifth one is, uh, fifth one is uh, lead barrier. Personal protective equipment. Additional protective device should be available in fluoroscopy and interventional room, which include. Sealing suspend protective screens, protective lead settings mounted on the patient table, protective lead setting for the op operator if the X-ray tube is placed in an over coach geometry and it's if the radiologist must stand near the patient. Dose reduce reduction. First one is updated kilo voltage, second one is filtration, third one is collimation, fourth one is MAS, and fifth one is image receptor. Factors affecting radiation dose. Factors affecting radiation dose are scattered dose rate is lower opposite to the entrance side of them, being higher with the larger field size and lower when the distance from the patient is increases. X-ray tube positioning. The best configuration uh, intensify up under X-ray tube down saves a factor of three or more in dose. Then in comparison to X-ray tube up and intensify. Position of the intervention. If oblique projection stand near the image side, exposure to the scatter radiation from the patient is reduced in this position. How to reduce patient dose? Keep the image as close as possible to the patient. Radiation follows inverse square law. Dose at the patient entrance surface increase. When the image is kept fair, it is okay if the image touches the patient. For the same reason, keep the X-ray tube away from the patient. Avoid magnification mode. These are the some avoiding magnification modes. Move the beam, spread the dose. Use higher KVP wherever possible. Use multiple projection. Move the X-ray tube, spread to do spread the dose. Keep fluoroscopic time to minimum. Personal dosimeter. Main dosimeter under the apron. Second dosimeter above the apron level of the neck, third dosimeter near the IR on the different types of personal dosimeter. TLD, electronic posimeter, direct ion posimeter and the radiation safety checklist. Appropriate, appropriate, appropriate protocols chosen, lead apron and goggles, wearing TLD under the lead apron, ceiling suspend the sealed and barrier lead settings use of low dose pulse fluoroscopy with lowest possible frames rate only authorized person in the room watch foot on pedal pedal only while looking at the screen use LAH. biological effect biological effect of radiation deterministic effect and scottish effect the effect is not observed when there is a threshold dose below example radiation determination Equation, interfilty, etc. Then, strategic effect there is no safe dose for strategic effect. Example, cancer, genetic, and effect. Radiation interaction with tissue. X rays, moving electrons, ionization, ionization free radicals, molecular damage which repairs cellular damage, cellular death, and cellular transformation. Deterministic effect in diagnostic radiology is probable. These are some table which include this diagnostic radiologic 
default due to ir procedures these are great to these are great for injuries right gluteal region progress to a non healing ulcer occurring skin graft these are arm injury progress these are right arm is exposed during the summary skin injuries good work practices knowledge about equipment personal monitoring device radiation safety yeah thank you uh, for all the presentation now request uh, uh, with the judges to go ahead with the question and answer session uh, judges please note uh, the aisha anwar is not able to join the uh, link question and answer session yes yes sir. so the previous topic that saina sony is available we can go ahead with the, the question and answer session with the saina sony Saina, can you switch on your camera? Yes. Namaste, Saina. I'm uh, Anto here. Uh, you have spoken about the computed radiography. Yeah, yes, computed radiography. Okay. 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 Uh, what is the expensive part in the computed radiography, uh, which you are uh, talking about? Uh, I think it's about installation of the machine, or we want to. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you. Tell me, what are the other expensive parts? You are talking about uh, cassette, screen, and other things. What is the expensive part? And uh, in that you are mentioning, or you feel that it is very expensive and how to be handled? I think uh, uh, the X-ray machine uh, we were using, or uh, in digital radiography, we want to refurbish the room. Mm. Okay, uh, you have mentioned ADC. What is that? Analog to digital converter. Okay, okay. I am. I have done, sir. Sir, you can uh, take over it, sir. Consult, sir. Okay. Saina, this topic CR. How it differs from the digital radiography? Is there uh, any correlation between the digital or CR? CR? Um, both are digital radiography, but in the case of digital radiography, uh, it's a cassetteless system. Here in computer radiography, we are using cassettes and readers also. But uh, in digital radiography, it's a one-step process. Uh, we don't need a cassette or a reader. Uh, in that, we are using uh, flat panel detectors, and uh, directly the images are getting to the monitor. We can see the images in the monitor. Directly. Yes, I supplement him, Mr. Anto, the question. He asked now what's the costly part of this CR. Now he gave the hint also, cassette and all these things. No? Now in the cassette, what are the components you're told? What are the components of the cassette, CR cassettes? Uh, CR cassette contain a PSP screen. Uh, CR screen. Do you know the cost of the PS CR screen? PSP screen. cost. It is a costly component, no? Yes, no, the, my question is, how many times you can use it, reuse it, the screen, the case, uh, this? Uh, big, uh, approximately 10,000 exposures can be made. Approximately, not sure. No. 10,000 is a very less it. number, no? Yeah, we can reuse it as a, uh, the remnant images are uh, erased using bright light bright white light so the cr cassettes can be reused as so we can times. do more than 10000 no? not not 10000 even up to 40 50000 yeah. we can do the exposures that depends yes. on their maintenance no so that's all from my side mr babu please yes. hi sani how are you hi sir i'm fine okay Thank you. So I would like to ask only one question. What is the major advantage of the CR system over the conventional screen film radiography system? Uh, in conventional screen film radiography system, uh, we are using chemical processing. And uh, we can't re uh, or so I'm not uh, asking CR that. Just what is the advantage of CR only? I'm, that's my interest. CR is what a two-step process. major advantage of the CR system over the conventional system? 
आई थिंक द कैसेस कैन बी रियूज्ड और इन कन्वेंशन सिस्टम द कैसेट कंटेन फिल्म स्क्रीन और वी कैन सी वी कैन टेक कॉपीज ऑफ दैट इमेजेस और इन कंप्यूटर रेडियोग्राफी और इन डिजिटल रेडियोग्राफी वी कैन टेक हार्ड कॉपीज or we can visualize it in a pad system or we can send it to uh, other computer systems uh, for viewing uh, in front of a doctor or uh, we can show it to a radiologist or uh, yeah uh, and we will get uh, a wider density <coughs> range the exposure uh, we can uh, visualize latitude. in the lower lower exposure latitude. or long latitude no Yeah, so it can okay. that yes. over exposure or under exposure also. Yeah, we can uh, visualize the image clearly. We can adjust the latitude or. So patient repeat exposure is very less. Yes, Almost patient rare. exposure can be made less. Hmm. Can you please ask again? But what is the? I ask the what's the most important one? The post processing is possible while in the conventional it's not possible. Once the picture is appeared. You can't increase or decrease the density yeah. or the contrast, but in this and in computer technology, yes, we can in one film you can put full IV U or any procedure or like that. You make the sections. Moreover, yes. instead you can send anywhere. Storage is easy. Yeah. So many technologies are there. And what will happen if you you will expose the CR plate and not put in the reader for few days? Then what will happen? CR Can you ask it? Uh, CR plate is exposed, it? but not processed. Yeah, uh, as the temperature, uh, temperature, uh, as the temperature increases, the electrons will uh, will be uh, ejected from the trap. So uh, we will not get a good image. Uh, so I mean, temperature out. is a factor. Uh, economic, sorry. Yeah, uh, you are right. I mean, environmental out. factors. Uh, environmental factors. Uh, is there as the temperature increases the electron will be ejected from the tra trap so the latent image uh, will be lost so the image will not be uh, so clear uh, but we have to uh, process it for uh, next ex exposure as there will be some remnant uh, latent image in that so we so should expose uh, that will washed out when we are the, in, inside the equipment there is a laser light Yeah, and that laser the light. very bright flood light. Yes, sir. The laser is reading the image, and the flood light is removing all the residual electrons there, so they will not cast the ghost shadow. Yes, sir. The major advantage is the post processing. Okay. That's the possible, economical. Yeah. Oh, very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bansar sir. Thank you, Mohan sir. Thank you. Saina, actually, uh, any presentation because now you all are doing well. Uh, go through it and go through what 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 is very important. Maybe ten minutes only, no? So, uh, very good try and uh, do well. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, sir. You can go ahead with the other uh, topic. Uh, the... Pranay, Pranay, Pranay. Pranay? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, Pranay. Um, thanks for your uh, topic on uh, preparations, contraindications, risk, and medication in interventional radiology. So, why you wanted to check BT and CT for uh, interventional? Sir, BT is the bleeding time and clotting time. It is uh, important. If the bleeding time is um, more, then this this procedure is not uh, happened with that patient. Hmm. Okay, clotting If time. Bleeding type will not check. Then it. Hmm. Clotting time is the time to form the blood clot. If we no not check the patient, the clotting time then it may be hazard to that patient or it may be from any severe disease to that and severe complication to that patient. Okay, and uh, what is the normal urine creatinine level? I mean, uh, urine creatinine level should be there, normal level. Zero. 
no you have Related mentioned that, 0. 742 1. 1. Okay. 1.4 no, the other thing is uh, other thing is uh, uh, if this level is even high up to 3 uh, they use other contrast uh, nowadays and uh, in in case if the patient is going for dialysis also even at a higher uh, creatinine they proceed with the study with the proper consent hmm? anyway thank you and uh, sir over to you sir yes sir okay miss pranay you have told about the preparation contraindication risk and medication in the intervention radiology but i am not knowing what is intervention yes, radiology sir. can you tell me what is the meaning of intervention radiology Sir, I'm not clear about it. Sir, radiology means it is a minim minimally invasive procedure uh, to diagnose or treat a medical condition. It is uh, minimally invasive means here small cutting, yeah, small insertion of instrument occurs during the procedure. This is procedure it is only. Used to diagnose. It is used to diagnose or treat a condition. That's why we call it intervention. We yes, intervene sir. with the help of catheter, guide wires, you know, yes, sir. we diagnose yes, sir. and yes, treat the patient. So what yes, are the sir. common, uh, you can say intervention procedure which are done, very common procedures, yes, intervention procedures. Sir, uh, coronary angiography. Angiography is a procedure, no? It is not intervention. Yes, sir. I ask intervention procedure, no? Intervention. Yes, sir. Seldinger technique. That is technique. What are the common intervention procedures? Intervention you are talking about, no? not diagnostic. Mm. Sorry, sir. I don't... Any, any example? Any disease related to kidney? Kidney. No, you not study it. Tran transplantation. When you say preparation yeah, of the, the patient, kidney. for which disease, for which case we yes. do the preparation of the patient? No? Which case? Hmm. The preparation you are saying, no? for which case you are preparing the patient? No? You are saying intervention preparation, intervention procedure preparations. In kidney uh, kidney related disorder, uh, renal uh, liver related disorder, or any name any procedure, name the procedure no. It's a white term, no? kidney related procedure. Renal failure, yeah. Anyhow, anyhow, you have, you have to study, but you try it, but you must know the basics no before coming yes, for sir. all these things. So don't discourage, yes, get discouraged. But come prepared. Okay, pass on to Mr. Bhagwat, please. Yeah, Mr. Parne, congratulations for your presentation. I, I would like Thank to ask you, a very simple question What is the role of interventional radio technologist before you receive the patient for the procedure? Before the patient comes, what's your role? Before the patient. Before you are receiving the patient, patient in the room. Change into your No, no, before the patient comes. When the patient came and you have your appointment for tomorrow, and you know the patient will come for tomorrow. So how you what's the role? What's the role of technology there? Has consent form is taken, then instruct the patient about the procedure, then instruct the patient the to consent check is already the, taken. Mm, when the patient came for looking, yes. consent is taken and the process is explained to him. Yes, sir. Hmm. Uh, urea creatinine level should be checked. That, no, no, that is asked idea, to the I'm asking for the, I'm asking for the, before the patient comes, how you, you will prepare your room, what are type of drugs are needed there, what are the life saving drugs are needed there, what type of contrast meter is needed there, whether your equipment is working or not working, whether the Part those need to be moved, that should be movable. Part those not need to move, that should be fixed. So many things are there. You have to yes, check sir. it. Suppose something happened. Suppose contrast yes, media reaction happened, and the doctor asked to yes. bring 
particular type of drug to inject to save the life of the patient. And you say, sir, I don't know. I have not kept it there. It was finished two days before or my date is expired. So you have yes, a great role to play. Before the patient come. Yes, sir. How many types of drugs we are keeping generally? Emergency there? drugs, anti-analgesic uh, drugs. Sir, uh, analgesic drug, anti-inflammatory drugs, and uh, apart um, from the covalent. last part, we are keeping three types of drugs. One is the proprietary drugs, contrast media, and drugs to deal with the adverse effects of the contrast media. So that's yes, your responsibility. Sir. Because radio yes, is not sir. the one who will decide what type of drugs is needed, what kind of, uh, how much dose is needed, in how much intervals are needed between the two doses. No, we are not the one, but we have to help yes. to the physician or clinician. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before good. we present, we put the Good, good, good. Thank you, Pranay. And uh, all is of learning only because uh, a good try and uh, keep doing well. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pranay. Thank you. And uh, who's next? Manjula. Manjula. Namaste, Manjula. Sir, can you hear me? Manjula, can you hear me? Hello, Yes, sir. I yeah, you are audible, Manjula. Uh, Manjula, from your topic, actually, we want to know uh, what is diagnostic and what is therapeutic. You have mentioned, no? Uh, what, uh, what problem is there with diagnostic, sir? Very, very good. Any blockage? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what uh, is therapeutic? The therapeutic uh, uh, procedure that, that are like uh, stenting, a stent graft is a therapeutic. No, that's, uh, that's See, diagnostic you explained very well, finding the problem. Finding. And uh, th therapy is nothing but yeah, it is treating, treating, the treatment, uh, treating the problem. Treating the problem. So it is like how we do in H HSG, you know, it is a procedure to find the problem. And also and during the procedure, sometimes block will be released. That is therapy. And uh, you mentioned about uh, this. Uh, how about the reusable things in your thing? How many times you reuse the catheters and all? Can be reusable, sir. Hmm? Cannot be reusable. All the things are single use. Yes, sir. No, are you confident yes, or I'm ask, asking whether you are seen or have you worked on it? What is sterilization happening on high high value consumables? I'm. Uh, I Suppose in case of sir. any. Uh, patients with any infections, do you reuse it or uh, single use? Cannot be, cannot be reusable, sir. Okay, be confident in something, yes. uh, whatever you are saying. No, there are certain things which can be uh, sterilized, but uh, any blood products or blood stained, I think they cannot we take cannot a chance. Of that. And what is the difference between biplane? You are talking about biplane, uh, cath lab, whenever biplane, whenever you... is, biplane is uh, if the Flat panel detector, sir, is a... No, that is a detector. Because no single plane is there, by nothing at one by shot. Is a neuro it, it, can, it can give images on uh, both planes, maybe anteroposterior, lateral. Mm -hmm. You can rotate the machine around the anatomy being imaged. Thank you, Manjula. Sir, over to you, sir. Manjula, you had told the good, good presentation, but the term which is used in materials used in the cath lab, no? So I'm not clear about the cath lab. Where it is used in the radiology department or the cardiology department? Cath lab. Radiology, radiology department. No, we use yeah. the intervention lab. No. Inter interventional radiology. Interventional radiology Intervention. or intervention lab. But cath lab is obsolete term. No. Yes, you have to correct it. No. Because yes. it is a very vague term, cath lab. No. It is meant for specific for cardiac catheterization, cardiac studies. Anyhow. Now, when you say materials used in the cath lab or the intervention lab, what are the X equipment? It is not part of the material. What are the different types of X modalities being used in the intervention lab? Modalities, sir. What are different imaging modalities used in the intervention lab? Um, neuro interventions and non-neuro interventions by playing. 
biplane this is not the name no biplane single plane i'm say asking what the name of the middle team modalities philip salura name like we say we use fluoroscopy we use unit a, that single plane or biplane biplane ft20 ultrasound unit we use mm. ct we may use mri we may use for information so you not explain no when you're talking about the material this is also material no this component of the intervention level okay so just be careful while we select the topic no what are the components you have to be very careful in expressing this all this thing no? anyhow doesn't matter but keep it up pass on to mr mohan bhagwat please namaste Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. I am. Okay. You are audible, sir. Yeah. What do you mean by selective catheterization? Selective, sir. Selective catheterization. Selective catheterization use of the uh, pectin catheters and straight catheters. No, what, do you by, what do you mean by what do you mean by selective catheterization? selective catheter is uh, it can it, it can be used in selectively using uh, one part okay okay go ahead go ahead use it for selective part like uh, part like that uh, coronary angiogram no no selective catheterization is in which we select the catheter according to the catheter. angle of the vessel arising from its origin that angle must meet so it should go properly and it should not harm the inner wall of the vessel that is called selective catheterization understand can you give any five name of the catheters we are using mostly commonly used Commonly used uh, cobra catheters, eight times 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 catheters, Keep studying and also uh, participate in all the other uh, future uh, conferences also, okay? Yes, sir. Ashwati, we will be happy to see, see all, all of you again. Yes, sir. Ashwati? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. Um, very nicely presented. And um, yes, Ashwati, what is the difference between 18 gauge and 21 gauge? Needle size is different, sir. That's what you have mentioned. Why you have mentioned two? Uh, Which one you will use for uh, adult or if the patient have very thin veins, whether you will, uh, which one you will use? Thin vein means we will use 20 gauge. Hmm. Then 21? 21. No, no, it is from your presentation only, not a problem. See, we wanted yeah. you all to go through your presentation before you present and so that it will be a little more. Uh, and uh, what is the, uh, you mentioned about consent form uh, to be taken, how many days it is valid? Suppose you started a consent procedure, you have taken consent form, but the study got uh, uh, cancelled. So same consent forms within how many days you will be using it? Um. Only for that day, sir, concern. If it is, uh, patient is not, uh, means uh, instable means he will, for next time, we will use next consent. Okay. No, the, normally there is a, a validation period also. Up to 30 days you can use, but that not a problem. But uh, always uh, try to follow that. In case if it is more than 30 days, you have to take a fresh consent. And uh, you have mentioned about the xylocaine sensitivity test and contrast sensitivity test and all. But as of now, they are not doing it. But uh, please follow the doctor's orders in that. Okay. Thank you, Ashwati. Uh -huh. Sir, over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. 
as for the you said four vessel NGO, no? Yes. In the four vessel NGO in your presentation, you told about the contraindication. On the yes. renal impaired function, no? Can you explain what the meaning of this contraindication? Renal, renal function. impaired function. Yeah. Yes, sir. Basically, we are injecting contract, sir, for uh, kidney is the main organ that will uh, excrete this. So if any kidney problem is there, means the contrast that we are injected is not released. So it will be a problem to that patient. Then how we decided to this impaired or not impaired? But the, any criteria is there, no? Some values are there, range is there. Simply saying that impaired renal yeah. function. Urea creatine test. What's the level of values? No? What's the normal values? What's the range? Point Earlier in the previous slide, Hmm. In the yeah, previous then, topic, it was already questioned, no? About the yeah, 0 0.2 to 1.4. No. Zero, what's the range? Is it creatinine or urea? Creatinine, sir. Creatinine. It's yes. more, more than 1.2 or up to 2? No, sir, we can't do up to one point four you will stop it then patient may die now uh, you have to very rational no, in giving the no, decision uh, we will ask with the urologist sir whether we can do the procedure or not if the no need of say. asking this renal impaired function simply ask him if it tells, do the procedure, do this. Otherwise, no need to ask this thing. So you will not do it. You won't depend on the reports, no? Only by opinion, you will say, eh? no, no, no. We have to see, document it. What's the values? What's the range? It is septal range or not septal range. Even if it's a higher range, we can change the contrast. We can increase the quantity. So these are the different types of further uh, but uh, procedures you can do, no? You can't stop the procedure with one instance that this uh, renal impaired function is there. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, pass on to Mr. Bhagat, please. Hi, Avasti. How are you? Avasti, I am audible to you. Yes, sir. Audible. How are you? Fine. <laughs> Uh, in your presentation, you have explained the, about the DSA. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. That stands for the digital subtraction geography. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, what is the major advantage of the uh, electrical injector, electromagnetic device that we call automatic injector? Yeah, pressure injector, sir. Yeah. That's not only pressure injector. It has many role to play. So we call this automatic injector. Automatic, yeah. So what are the advantage? Uh, flow rate, sir. Okay. We can adjust the flow rate. In. Yes. The determined value can be selected. Yes. And uh, then uh, um, Rate, volume, pressure, all can be selected. Yeah. Then in, uh, pain also is less comparing in, with pain. The injector has any role in the radiation protection? Uh, time, sir. It will uh, reduce the time. I mean, provide any radiation play any role in the radiation protection for the staff? Staff? Yeah, sir. Uh, this, we can... Uh, uh, before only we can adjust this flow rate and all. So the radiologists can come to the console. Then we can adjust from the console. So it will reduce the uh, radiation to the... Remote operating is possible with the automatic. So no yeah. need to stand inside. When we are injecting manually, we are receiving the exposure. Yeah. So remote control is possible. So you come out and then control from remote area. So it also playing role in the 
initial protection for the staff and good okay ashwati sir ashwati that contrast what sirs and all were talking even we are talking is see up to 1.6 or 1.7 again you can use routine contrast if the creatinine is high there is a recommended vcpec also where it can be used up to 3 and if oh. even if it is exceeding 3 if the patient is going for next day dialysis nothing to worry about this unless but uh, based on the clinical thing the clinician will take a call on that only thing the con consent has to be documented and the referring doctor has to be informed about the changes hmm? good job and uh, see you all are very good uh, lecturers in college make use of it and uh, focus on the uh, studies whatever you are doing good job okay sir thank you thank you thank you thank you kartik 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 am i audible You you have to be a little louder, Karthik. I am not able to hear you. Karthik, you are on your mobile or on your laptop? No, I am not. Anyway, I, uh, am I clear to you? No, because your voice, I am not able. Sir, can you hear him, Karthik? No, no, we can't hear him. No. Uh, that's the what Karthik. Is the two things are there. Either you speak on the phone, remove the headset. No, sound quality is poor. Otherwise, yeah. no sound. Know. At least. Ah, uh, now. No speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, now it's good. Okay, Karthik. Uh, okay, fine, Karthik. Uh, you are talking about lead protective devices in uh, cath lab lead apron. What about skirt and vest? Is he is not able to hear without the the head device. He is unable to hear without the earphone. Once you hear with the head device, they remove it. They listen speak it. No, okay. without head device. Uh, what about skirt and vest in cath lab? No, you have shown lead apron in cath lab. Actually, cath lab, yes, there is a different lead apron devices for the doctors. It is a skirt and vest. Have you seen it, or you are not using it? Yes, sir, I have seen it. Okay. And uh, have you heard about uh, TLD badge wrist wrist badge? Yes, sir, I can't. i am clear i think because uh, anyway you just to see whether you can hear others okay you said uh, to the patient x ray machine or x ray intensifier should be closed during cath lab procedure which which is the right way sir i can't hear your voice clearly sir uh, i think sound is very clear You try to understand, sir. Okay. Sir, Anto's voice is quite clear, and you try to understand it. Check your mic and all this out. Your own earplugs, no? Okay. Anybody, you can ask a question. I will think whether if uh, see, it's not a problem. I think. Or uh, questions can be put it in chat box, in case. Ah, that also we can do. But, yeah, Antosh, uh, sir, you put your question in the chat box. Sir. I think it's a good idea. And that question only can be seen by him. It will take a lot of time, no? Karthik, sir, yes. sir, you ask the question. I think I think whether your voice, let him hear. Not a problem. Vanjal ji, you can talk to him. Karthik, can you listen me? Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now speak loudly. Okay. 
the judge told about this uh, radiation safety specs in intervention radiology how it differs from the basic radiology general radiology radiation safety in intervention radiology and general radiology how it differs no? you can't listen you know your sound is not audible But when you are presenting, your sound also quite good. In between, sound spears, no, no, this spear. Yeah, audible. Just speak loudly. So I can't hear what you say. Not that I can understand. No, we can't listen. You know, we can't see, listen, hear. You know. Anyhow, Mr. Bhagwat, you can try. <laughs> okay. Mr. Karthi. Sir, Bhagwat, sir, you can ask. Keep your mouth and try to speak loudly. Sir? Keep your mic near your mouth okay. and try to speak loudly. Okay, now you are audible to me, and you are replying. It means my sound is reaching to you. Okay. Uh, your presentation was for radiation protection, na? In international radiology. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Being a radio technologist, what you should do while conducting international procedure to keep the dose minimum for you and your team? I think some audio problem. I think better we can leave it because. Sir. Yeah. Sir, yes. I just after international service, sir, after that I can't. Hey, can you see chat box? Karthik, can you see chat box? This one. Chat box. Questions are there. Questions are there. Questions the are there. What is the role while conducting procedures? Yeah, answer. Sir, sir, can I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are audible. Sir, can I audible? Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes. Sir, uh, what is the role? You should check accessories. Uh, sir, you should check off accessories and you should follow the. No, now there is no excuse. Question is already there in the chat box. And you are audible to us. Yes, Karthik, you are very audible. Just give it, we are hearing you. No problem, continue. Yeah, answer a question uh, which is given in a chat box. Sir, we should follow the issue there with liquor tank. There is no exceeding, sir. But we want to maintain serious, sir. I can't hear anything from you, sir. We are hearing you. Please continue. So, how radiation safety should be? Sir, in general radiology, only radiation 
part will be like B or C or but intermission rate will be we will go with the cat lab which also includes the part here which is not related to radio. But to explain, you are saying that is different. Explain it. how it is different. Stop it. We are using the yeah. same kind of energy. Both I think are we can energy stop it. I would say we different. can stop, sir. Stop it, please, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can stop it. I think uh, with this, I think we can end the uh, total presentation and as well as the question and answer session. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, Aishan War is not. Yeah, Aishan War is not able, able to join. So we can give a grace mark on okay. a, on a absent. Okay. I think with this uh, we will end uh, today's session. Uh, especially uh, thanks to panel of judges. Uh, special thanks to Dr. S. C. Bansal sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, for despite of uh, uh, the uh, uh, busy schedule, he agreed to be part of. Uh, Judges panel and uh, it was a very good interaction. It's our pleasure, the judges sir. and Thank the you. students. If I request, uh, uh, you can say a few words. The, I request all the judges to say a few words. Okay. Uh, Let's um, from Mr. Anto. Okay. Uh, namaste, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, the guest of today's day, and also uh, thank you, ISRT, for arranging a wonderful session for the budding technologists and also the technologists who are already uh, working on board and uh, at this stage i wanted to say that actually the uh, new designation for all of us uh, radiology imaging officers that is wo work is in progress i have to thank all the senior uh, faculties and also experts in this field for working together to get that uh, council things uh, yet uh, still more milestone we have to achieve and uh, it is a wonderful effort by ISRT and uh, also by Shashi and Mahesh and Panisalum sir of conducting this uh, event successfully. And uh, we were on behalf of uh, 2050 Healthcare uh, Pan India team, I like to thank all of you and also wish you all a wonderful uh, radiography day. And it's what, it was a wonderful event and all, also the sessions were very knowledgeable. We also learned from them. I think uh, we have to keep grooming them. Uh, there are some people who are reading uh, through the slides. I think if we have a one-on-one -on -one interaction, it is, I think we'll be able to groom them better. And uh, thank you, Bansal sir and uh, Mohan sir. And uh, also all the uh, ISRT leadership team for this wonderful event. Uh, post pandemic, after two years, I think we are able to get connected and also a few online and offline sessions were in progress so once again thank you all and uh, wishing you all the best hopefully we all will soon uh, meet together and uh, take our uh, uh, profession to an to the higher heights thank you all thank you so at the outset i express my deep gratitude to the isrt mr selva mr suresh and other dignities Mr. Sashi, Mr. Mahesh, for putting Mr. Anto, Mr. Bhagwat, my co judges. And especially the students, participants, who has been provided a wide platform, a big platform nationally, even if you can say international platform, to make them appear in front of the large gathering to express their opinion to come out with their knowledge, skills, presentation skills. It doesn't matter how they present. It's the confidence which they evolve while coming to the platform, which is more important. So I compliment all the participants and say best of luck to the shortlisted candidates for their best result. With this, I thank each and everyone for giving me the opportunity to be here among us you.
I am glad and thankful to the ISRT team for providing me this opportunity to use this reputed platform where we interact with our colleagues, seniors and students. I would like to appreciate the painstaking job of Mr. Mahesh and Shashi because the, though in age we are senior, my age is I think double than I think if you will sum the age of Sashi and Mahesh, my age is more. But only yesterday I know how to prepare a PPT. I was teacher of board and one chalk, or you can say marker pen. But in IT, I, I am very poor. But yesterday I learned how to prepare a city and how professionally they manage the whole program the whole program was run flawless. So, thank you very much, Shashi. Thank you very much, Mahesh. And to our whole official office bearer of ISRT, those are providing such type of opportunity to our students because our students are facing a challenging job, not like Durb country. They are going to work in a rural area as well as in the multi-specialty hospital. So they must acquire the knowledge in such a scenario that they should be fit to the demand of industry. And the students, those have presented the papers here today, not, do, please do not go from where they take the matter, who instruct them, how, that, that's not our matter. We must appreciate their braveness that they came forward to present the paper and I want, I am very hopeful that one day our, with the help of the society platform, they will make a wonder one day. It's not so that Americans or British are much ahead to us. No, not at all. So and those are my, I, my own experience, my wife was admitted in the Chicago and the city, for the city investigation and the technologist was, they are not able to inject medicine in the vein. She took five or six pricks. But in India, even you go to rural area, even my nurse or my exit technician, in, it, rarely they will go for the second prick. So that is our hand on practice. Maybe the, the good books are not accessible. Our libraries are not so rich like their libraries. Because I went to the Wisconsin university, their library is so rich in the book. All types of books are there. Maybe we don't have that. But hand on practices, we are superior. And it is the duty of the ISRT to make them superior in the theoretical part also. And we teachers should, should take the responsibility for this. I congratulate to all team of ISRT, especially to Mahesh and Shashi. Those have done this wonderful job. And all our participants and our students. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. And again, happy World Radio of Day. Thank you, Mohan sir and Bansal sir. And uh, finally, I also wanted to once again uh, talk about this um, ultrasound. We have a very good curriculum in our course in BSc and MSc. But mm -hmm. students, because of PCP Entity Act, they are not allowed to do. I think uh, they have a lot of scope when they go out of India where they have to work. I think. Uh, even the PCP entity says that they should not do a ultrasound, but they can assist the doctor and learn ultrasound and know the uh, other things. So I think uh, we have to insist them in uh, uh, stimulators to learn, not on uh, missions. So uh, I think once again, I request all the senior members, faculties to strengthen their uh, skills in uh, reporting also, because most of the radiographers do pre-read and uh, post-read in order to uh, ensured the quality and accuracy of the uh, teleradiology reporting. So there are a lot of scope of radiographers uh, in India, including artificial intelligence, uh, where it is taking to different heights. So once again, thank you for ISRT and all the team members. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, dear students, uh, kindly note, 
the result of the uh, today's event as well as the quiz program will be announced tomorrow in a, in a email circulation. So, Mr. Shetty, uh, we have to send a result to you only? Yes, sir. By WhatsApp, yes. you can send it, no? Yeah, it can be sent. Cheek. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Can I take the photo of this result and yes. send to you? Yes. Send a, yes, send a photo, sir. Okay. So, immediately I am going to send to you, no? Yes. <laughs> Thank you all. I will announce it tomorrow. I will announce in a group. Okay, sir. Group and as well as we have a telegram group, I will announce okay. the result. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mogesh. Thank you. Thank bye you. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Yes. Good night. Good night.